Welcome. So what I have here is a quadratic equation. And what I'm going to do is show you how to solve this by using our AC method. And the important thing that we look at this is we notice that our absolute value of our A, the absolute value, not just the value of A, the absolute value of our A is going to equal 1. So our traditional factoring techniques are not going to apply. However, I always want to see if I can go back to a traditional factoring technique just by factoring out a GCF. But in this case, we notice that there are no common terms of all three of my terms that I can factor out. So the first thing when solving, we're going to want to make sure that, eh, let's save some space. And let's just rewrite our y as 0. Right? We want to find when solving or finding the x intercept, we want to find the values of x when our output or our y value is equal to 0. OK, so by using the AC method here, this is what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is we need to create back our diamond again. Now, when I, we had a was equal to 1, we had c up top and b on the bottom. right? C up top, B on the bottom, what two numbers multiply to give you C, add to give you B, and then we had our two factors, P and Q. However, when we have the absolute value of A is greater than 1, we have to include that value of A. So rather than having C up top, now it's going to be A times C. And we'll see how this is going to work. So let's do A times C. So A is negative 3, C is negative 15. So negative 3 times negative 15 is a positive 45. Then we're going to take our values of B, which are going to be a positive 14. So now what we want to do is we want to find the values that multiply to give us positive 45, but then add to give us 14. Sorry. All right, so let's go ahead and write down the factors then of 45. Now, we know that 45 is positive, so all my factors could be 2 positive or 2 negative. I'm just going to write the positive. And obviously, we know that since they have to add to a positive number, we're not going to be dealing with any negative factors. So we could have 45 times 1. We could do 15 times 3, we could do 9 times 5. And I believe that's everything we have. So out of all those factors, what are the only two that add up to give us 14? Well, you can see that 9 times 5 is going to be our, so going to be our answer. All right. So now we've affected our, a and our C and B by multiplying by A. So 9 and 5 are not going to be our factors. We are not going to write. 0 equals x plus 9 times x plus 5. Because guess what? If you multiply that out by using FOIL or any other method, you're not going to get this answer back. You're going to get x times x is x squared. We need to get negative 3x squared when we multiply our two factors. And actually, we need to get the whole thing back. So we have this a right? that's multiplied. So somehow, we need to be able to factor this out. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're still going to use the 9 and the 5. But what we're going to use the 9 and the 5 by is to rewrite our 14x. So we're going to rewrite 14x as 9x plus 5x. All right, so I'm not changing my problem. I'm just rewriting 14x as 9x plus 5x. And then the rest of the equation remains the same. All right, so the reason why we rewrote our middle term is because now what we're going to do is going to factor by grouping. So factoring by grouping, what we're going to do is we're going to group our first two terms and then group our last two terms. And then what we're going to do is factor out a factor out our common terms of each expression. So in doing this, I look at my first two terms and I say, all right, what does negative 3x squared and 9x have in common? And we always like to factor out that negative number. So I can say that they both share a negative 3x. Let's use blue. I like blue. So that's going to leave me with an x minus 3. Then I look at 5x minus 15, and I say, what do these two share? And we could say, well, they both share a 5x. So let's po factor out a positive 5x. And that's going to leave me with a x minus 3. And our whole goal by, fa by factoring by grouping is to get factors that are going to be exactly the same. Because factoring by grouping is kind of two steps. You first factor out the common factor. Then you factor out what they have in common, which is x minus 3. So let's factor that out. So now when I factor out an x minus 3, I'm left with a negative 3x plus, oh, I can only factor out a 5, not a 5x. I can only factor out a 5, not a 5x, because this doesn't have an x. So 5 times 3x minus 5. Now I have a product of two factors. And you can notice that when I multiply these two, I'm going to get back this solution. So now, by multiply, since this multiplies in there and it equals 0, I can apply the 0 product property. All right, so by applying the zero product property, now I have two linear equations that I can solve. 
So therefore, x equals 3. And x equals 5 thirds. There, therefore, go, therefore you go, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore you go, therefore, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a quadratic to find the x-intercepts or the solutions of the equation or function, depending on what kind of questions you have. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.